I am a, a policy and a training coordinator at LACNIC, and I welcome you to start a new public policy forum. Before we start, let me remind you that we have the booth of LACNIC. We invite you to go there if you want to know any details in the agenda. Uh, please look, it, look for it at the website. Now, without any more preambles, we'll start with the Public Policy Forum. So I invite the moderators, uh, Sergio Rojas and uh, Marcelo Rizcai, that uh, are going to be in charge uh, of chairing the Public Policy Forum. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session of the Public Policy Forum of LACNIC 42. I'm Marcela Orbiskay, together with my colleague Sergio Rosa Rojas, who will be in charge of this session. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Marcela, for the introduction, and thank you everyone for joining us today. During this forum, we'll have two policy proposals for those of you who are new in the forum and are not so familiar with the policy development process. Let me let us give you a presentation of what the PDP is and what we will be discussing during the forum. So where do the IP addresses come from, IPv4, IPv6, and autonomous systems? This is likely to be one of the questions that you might ask yourself. So let us explain what, how this works in this slide. ICANN is the organization responsible for managing and distributing all those numbers of the IP addresses. In addition to that, there are five regional registries located in different parts of the world. These organizations are called RIRs. These RIRs receive a segment of that set of numbers and then distribute these in their respective regions. This is the case for LACNIC. This is an RIR in charge of managing and distributing these number resources in the Latin American and Caribbean region and cover 43 countries in the region. So any organization, whether an internet provider, a traffic exchange point, uh, the academia, banks, government entities located in this area have to request these resources to LACNIC. Now the question is, how does LACNIC know how many IPv4 or IPv6 addresses or what autonomous systems will be assigned to these organizations? Or how these organizations that are based here know what the requirements are to apply for resources to LACNIC? And the response is quite simple. LACNIC has a manual. This manual, this document, is a 66-page document containing a guide containing rules describing how LACNIC will be distributing these resources in the region. This guide also explains the requirements so that the organizations requesting resources know what to comply with when requesting these resources from LACNIC. So who writes this manual? The community. And when I say the community, it's all of us. This is through an open and participatory process where each one of you, from where you are, can propose changes to the manual, can propose adding things, can propose removing things from the manual. So to sum up, what LACNIC does is to follow the guidelines of what is stated in the manual. This manual was written by us as a community. So to sum up, what we do is we generate this manual. We give it to LACNIC, so LACNIC can implement what is contained there. So LACNIC implements what we have written in this manual. How can we participate? In this forum, we'll be having two proposals. This did not begin today. Not now, it didn't begin two days ago. We work through a mailing list. This is a QR code if you wish to 
read this with your mobile phone. This is a link to a website. You can register in this mailing list and participate in the policy development process. These two proposals were submitted a couple of weeks ago. The community already expressed its opinion on these proposals. So during this public policy forum, we'll be presenting these proposals. Then we'll be opening the microphone so those who are in the room and those who are joining us remotely can express your opinions on these policies. Who can st give their opinions? Anyone. You needn't be a member of the community. You needn't be a LACNIC member. You needn't even have resources assigned to you by LACNIC. You even need to live in this region. Anyone from any part of the world can express their opinion, can participate in the discussions, and can even submit proposals for the policy manual. The PTP chairs are the two of us. We work on a honorary basis over a two-year period. My colleague Marcela began in 2023 and will be finishing in 2025. And this is the second time I am a PDP chair. I started in 2024 and I will be finishing in 2026. Our task is to analyze and assess the discussion that takes place in the policy discussion list and also during this forum. So based on what you express, or your opinions you express on the proposed policy proposal, we will determine whether the community is in favor of implementing these or not. Following several internal processes, these proposals will then be incorporated to LACNIC's policy manual, and the new version will be given to LACNIC so that they can implement these new rules. So this is how the policy development process is carried out. This session is subject to the Code of Conduct. Conduct on LACNIC 42 website, you have a link that takes you to the Code of Conduct. Once again, we invite you to participate. I told you that the microphone will be open, so please participate, express your opinions regarding the proposed a policy proposal. It doesn't matter if you work for a small, medium, or large enterprise. You can be end users interested in improving the policy manual. So you're all welcome to express your opinion. So far, was this was my part of the presentation, and I give the microphone back to Marcela. Thank you, Sergio. Let us now have a look at the cycle followed by a proposal during the development process. When a proposal is submitted, in other words, someone in the community has detected an opportunity for improvement, this, is, this process begins by filling out a form once that proposal is presented in the discussion list, the initial discussion takes place. This initial discussion at least is there for eight weeks plus a presentation during the forum. So after those eight weeks of discussion and after having presented the proposal during the forum, the first consensus is checked. So the chairs have 14 days in order to determine consensus using as input the discussions made in the list, plus what we were able to see during the policy development forum. If this proposal gains consensus, an initial consensus, there is a period for final comments. The final comment stage involves a four-week period in the mailing list. During this process, changes or edits might occur, so the four-week period begins once again if there have been edits to that proposal. Following that final comments period, the chairs then determine the second consensus. During that second consensus period, we have four days to determine this. Once again, analyzing the comments made in the mailing list, 
So we then determined the second consensus. In the event of having a favorable second consensus, the proposal proceeds to ratification by the board. This is done by LACNIC's board, and following that stage, it proceeds to implementation in the policy manual or in the policy development process. If a proposal does not reach consensus, or if the initial consensus or the second consensus is not reached and is there in standby, it is then returned to the discussion or is also abandoned. Let me also clarify that both after the first consensus or the second consensus, or if the proposal is not ratified and 12 months elapse since the initial discussion, it is then determined that this proposal has been abandoned. Let me clarify, especially for those who are new or for those who are here for the first time, that during the policy development forum, we do not vote, but we rather reach consensus. In order to determine consensus, we understand that a proposal has reached consensus when it is supported by significant opinions after an extensive discussion and if there are no technical objections that are irrefutable. So this is what is stated in LACNIC's policy development process. Now let us have a look at what occurred since LACNIC 41 in the month of May through to now. The proposal LAC 2023-3 in its second version to consider a proposal as abandoned was implemented, like 2023-4 version 2, legacy resource management did not reach consensus. Proposal lack 2023-6 version 2, ex special exception for critical infrastructure providers was implemented, lack 2023-7 version 2, temporary transfers has a new version which will be presented shortly. Proposal LAC 2024 1 version 1. Introduction of proposals in the PDP did not reach consensus. LAC 2024 2 version 1 appeals process did not reach consensus. Proposal LAC 2024 3 version one, use of resources by authorized third parties by those by the recipients did not reach consensus. So let us have a look now at how we will be distributing the presentations today. This is the life cycle of each policy proposal. Like Sergio was saying, we're going to be discussing two proposals at this forum. We'll have a presentation by the authors this will be 10 minutes, during which they will highlight the main points included in these new versions. Then Franco will tell us about the impact analysis. This will take five minutes. The staff will be presenting the impact analysis. Following that, we'll be having a 20-minute discussion with two minutes for each speaker, where they will, might ask questions to the author with the microphone in the room or also through the Q&A box in those, for those who are participating remotely. And this is then followed by measuring the temperature in the room. This is a process where we measure acceptance or not of this proposal, but this is no voting. It's not voting. Uh, 
These are the recommendations we make. Each person who takes the floor will speak in the language. This session is being interpreted and transcribed live, so please speak clearly in order to better convey your message. And we request you to please respect the time allocated to you by the chairs. In the effort of trying to listen to everyone, we will prioritize the diversity of voices. In other words, we will try insofar as possible that those who still haven't taken the floor for a given proposal will do so prior to giving the floor to people who have already taken the floor. This is the agenda for today. We are now in the opening session and the presentation of the moderators. The first proposal is 2024 for version one, the log of allocations from the pool of IPv4 addresses reserved for critical infrastructure. Following that, we'll have a break from 11 to 11.30. We ask you to please be back on time in the room because they will be having the presentation of LAC 2023-7 sev temporary transfers, version 3. Then we'll have the open mic session. And finally, we'll be closing the forum. So welcome. And we will start now with the presentations. Thank you.